Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. And we have a great show for you today. I've got my friend here, Vincent Ng, and he is the founder of MCNG Marketing. And Pinterest. He's a Pinterest marketer, speaker, and he, this is awesome, he enjoys reading Batman comics. So he's also the author of Pinterest to Profits with Pentalysis and the host of Pictures of Profits podcast. He's a top 20 resource for becoming a Pinterest expert, according to Heo, and has written for amazing blogs such as Social Media Examiner, Top Dog, Top Dog Social Media, and Tailwind. And Vincent will be launching the Pentalysis Academy, on, an online on-demand Pinterest marketing course, at the end of August. And I've had a sneak peek of that course, and let me tell you folks, it is awesome. And you can re read his latest Pinterest tips at mcngmarketing.com on his blog. And hey, I appreciate you stopping by, Vincent, to uh, give us some um, insights on Pinterest search today. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, my absolute pleasure, Jeff. I just let you know it, it's an honor to be here. I know that you've been working hard on the Manly Pinterest Show, and uh, to be uh, your second guest, I, I am, I am truly honored. So, so thank you for your your kindness and generosity, and and gracious hospitality. You're very known for your hospitality. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who stopped by also for our live show today. Um, well, we're going to try to get to your questions to the second part of the show. Um, but if you'd like to start asking them in the comment section, we'll try to get to those. And I know you have some uh, great questions for Vincent. We'd also like for you to head over to mainlypinteresttips.com and subscribe to our email community um, because that way you'll never miss a show and you'll find out when these uh, live shows where you can come and take a part. So let's get right to it. First of all, Vincent, give us a little overview of your kind of your business journey. How, how did you get started marketing online? Yeah, it's really interesting. It ended up kind of being a, a, a twist of faith um, where I was actually marketing for a, um, a company that was competing with Foursquare at the time. We were doing loyalty rewards by mobile. Uh, it didn't quite work out, but they had introduced me into the world of Twitter. Uh, and it was very fascinating. And his name was Yukai Chow. And at the time, he had 25,000 followers. And it was he was saying, check out this possibility. And I was working with these guys that it was you know, we're doing social media for the LA Lakers, they were doing social media for Sephora, and it really opened my mind into what the new world was about and how I felt like, man, I got to get on this or else I'm, I'm going to be falling behind. Um, but lo and behold, what ended up happening was that, you know, they, they taught me a few things, started blogging, uh, and I just, I really loved it. I fell in love with it, went back to school for some more learning about social media marketing, uh, and I haven't looked back since. It's been a very fun journey, that's for sure. Awesome. So now your business is, is a lot of it's built around Pinterest. So what drew you initially to, out of all the social media networks, what, what drew you to this kind of visual social network? Yeah, I think that there was, um, for me, there was there are two things that really drove me to, to Pinterest specifically. Uh, number one, like you're saying, it's a visual network. Uh, and I had to admit, it was just, <laughs> lack of a better word, it was just plain cool. Um, you're able to discover stuff that was just so easy to find. I was able to uh, find comic art, uh, find travel locations, things I'd never discovered before. Uh, and it was just amazing. And number two, the, tr the truth is it's funny because I'm, I'm sure you've heard this before, Jeff, is that sometimes, uh, you know, you're, you could be very good at a client's Facebook page and Twitter page, uh, but your own results aren't always that great when using those type of mediums. And that was the case for me. I, I mean, marketing is a very saturated space on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, and I was allured by Pinterest because, you know, it, it was driving traffic very quickly. Uh, and I realized this is something that I could use myself. And, and that was really the second allurement was the fact that I, I just couldn't get my others to grow. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to get really strong on this platform. And that's, that's why I chose Pinterest. Gotcha. And, and that kind of is my same story too. I, I just, you know, it is was a saturated space, but the, the longevity of pins and being able to drive traffic for such a long amount of time, that was very attractive to me, just like, like you mentioned. Um, when you talk to clients, you know, when somebody says, okay, I've got all these social networks, everybody's telling me to be on every single one of them, why do you recommend to your clients that they should take a look at Pinterest? Yeah, and I think that's a very valid question. I think you, the way you phrase it is like, take a look at it, the jump full board and dedicate like 20 hours a week to it. Uh, I, I recommend it because I think a lot of people may not realize how much traffic it drives to their site. Like you mentioned earlier, it's a really great traffic driver. Um, they may not know the fact that there are a lot of um, people that really, there are a lot of people that are just very visually stimulated. You know, they, they don't want to read tweets. They're not necessarily 
into Facebook statuses, uh, but they love seeing stuff. And I think that the way I look at it is I tell people, like when you go to a bookstore and you look at magazines, right, you look at the headlines, you look at the pictures, chances are you're probably going to be more engaged with that. And I feel like Pinterest is like that. So if you're in a business that has great visuals that you feel would be great for a magazine cover, but you don't have kind of the, the multi-million dollar publishing platform, then Pinterest is definitely worth a look at. Gotcha. Now, um, one of the things you mentioned, Pinterest is such a visual network. Um, do how is it hard for your clients or for people you talk to thinking, uh, you know, I do um, something that doesn't have a lot of images. Should I even mess with Pinterest? I mean, is it still valid for them to look at it? Yeah, and I think that's the thing too. I think that's where creativity, Pinterest, and marketing will, will come in together. Is that uh, I think people think, oh, I have a very boring topic. You know, um, and then they go, well, I, I don't know how to visually create something stimulating. And I want to kind of take a, a quick example from an insurance company, not necessarily from Pinterest, but uh, insurance company decide that they're going to use Reddit to help promote their site, drive up SEO traffic, search engine optimization traffic. But, but, but life insurance is a very boring topic. So they decide we're, we're going to tell you 10 facts about death that you probably didn't know. You know, and I think that any boring company can do that. You can, if you're into the business of vegetables, you should tell, you should be like, it should be a pin or an infographic about the top 10 ways carrots are going to supercharge your kids. Um, yeah. So whatever, you know, it, it's just, but it's, it's so funny because people say it's boring and yet we, it's only limited by your imagination and whatever you think would be interesting to people that they don't know, you can create a pin around that. You can create an infographic around that. There are no boring or non-visual businesses. It's really how you interpret it. Yeah, that's great. Um, now, just like any other other platform, it, it, all all businesses want to be found online. I mean, that's the reason a lot of them are there. So, um, can you give us a brief overview on how search works in Pinterest? Because that's what we kind of really want to dive in today. How does you know Pinterest has got its? We're, we're not talking right now about Google search and SEO for for that. We're talking about the, the, new, the Pinterest search inside of Pinterest. Can you kind of give us a brief overview on how that works in, in Pinterest? Yeah, uh, I wish I, I'm, I'm going to do my best with a brief one um, because I, I like to call Pinterest as the, um, the search engine with many faces. Right. <laughs> um, because it really is. It's, it's not, um, unlike Google, Google kind of has a landing page and then you, you type in what you want and it has results. Um, with Pinterest search, you're able to search actually by pins. So if you're looking for pins that, um, that are related to a specific topic, you can search by uh, a search term there. You can search by specific boards that may contain a search word. Um, you can also search by other pinners. So again, if I want to look up uh, Jeff, I'll type in Jeff C under pinners, and you're, you're going to show up. It's, it's fantastic. Where it gets also very complicated is now they've added interest. So if you go to the desktop version, they have interest. So if you try typing the search term, uh, for example, if I type in Pinterest marketing under interest, there's nothing there. So it's always a little bit of a guess. Uh, and then the, the final one that people are probably aware of is guided search. So right now, if you use your mobile device on the iPad, uh, on an Android device, there's a guided search, which is a type of search which says, hey, if I type in manly, there might be a chance that the word Pinterest is going to show up on this bar on the bottom. It recommends these kind of things. So, so that's guided search. So there's so many faces uh, to the Pinterest search, um, but really the basics is pins, boards, and pinners. Gotcha. Um, now, you know, you mentioned that guided search, and that's a relatively kind of new thing Pinterest has has been doing. What do you think Pinterest's strategy is behind that? Are, are you are you thinking there that might be coming, trying to become like a leader in visual search? I mean, is that what's going on there? Yeah, I don't, I think that's, I still see uh, Pinterest as a lifestyle visual search. I think that's really what it's about. They're not trying to say, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think they're trying to be like an about.com where they're trying to give you just right. pure information, but really it's a lifestyle visual search engine. And I think that's what they really want you to do. They really believe in discovery. I like to say it's accidental discovery. I think Pinterest is moving towards accidental discovery. They don't, even though I kind of teach people to kind of use the system and use algorithms and all that, the truth is they really don't like that. They're really discouraging that. And so guided search is a way for you to continue to discover content that you like, that you enjoy, that you're curating, um, not necessarily from specific pinners, but more based on interest and pins themselves. 
Excellent. That's, that's a great overview. So, okay, we got a great overview on how kind of Pinterest internal search works. Um, say I'm a person who's brand new to Pinterest, a business who's just getting on Pinterest. How do? What's the best way to optimize my individual pins for search on Pinterest? Uh, are there some best practices that you recommend? Yeah, I, there are definitely some best practices, Jeff. Uh, and the very first thing you want to do is is you want to make sure that you're putting the search terms that your customers are using into the pin descriptions. Um, and that's really vital. That's kind of the, what I call the very first step. Um, so, for example, if you are selling women's shoes, you want to put in the word women's shoes in your your pin description. Now, people are going, well, I, I don't even know what my customers are typing in. Like, how do I even know? Well, the very surefire way is to go to the desktop version of Pinterest, go to the top left-hand corner of the search box, and type in the word um, that, that's about your business. So, for example, if I type in sofa, interestingly enough, sofa tables is number two. So, wow, people are actually searching for sofa tables. So, you want to put those keywords in there. That's the very very first step I would recommend. Um, the second step that I recommend is to make sure that you're trying to get repin activity for that that pin. So a lot of people real, don't realize is that repins actually matter, that, that engagement matters. So you need at least one repin um, to help it kind of to go up in, uh, in the search results. And the best way to do this is number one, uh, you can join a group board because group boards tend to get more repins very quickly. Uh, number two, uh, is to actually have an influencer pin. So if you have an influencer relationship and if they pin because they have lots of followers, your repins are going to get well quite high very quickly. So those are two ways to kind of boost your search. Use the keywords and try to get the repin activity as high as possible. So when you're creating your pin, so do you go in and actually, is it to you name your image that certain keyword? Do you put it in the description? How do you put that, you know, that what you put up in the search box into your actual pin? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, so I, I've always felt that the easiest way to do this, uh, because it's just easier to type, is to, to use the desktop version of Pinterest. Um, and basically when you upload a pin or you're pinning uh, something from a website, you have the option, it has this box that says description. Uh, and in there is your chance to put in you know, the search terms that you want or the keywords that you want. So again, it could be one keyword, it could be uh, two keywords, um, whatever that you're looking for, um, but make sure you put it in the description and, and that's the easiest and best way to help you rank um, for your, your pins for higher search results. Gotcha. So do you also recommend using hashtags? Um, I'm, I'm sure you don't mean like just a keyword stuff and you want your descriptions to, you know, flow and make sense and not look like you're a spammy you know, marketer, but you you want do you recommend hashtags as well? I I do in a very specific cases. So I recommend hashtags that are very unique, um, that you know that you kind of own. So if, if for example, like you own Manly Pinterest Tips, um, that's yours. I hope nobody copies it. If you copy it, I'll come get you. <laughs> I will right. come get you. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and I think that the thing is when you use hashtags, a lot of people use them very generically, and that's okay. But what happens is that when people click on it, there's a variety of search results. It's not the it's not just hashtags only. I think the misconception is that people think it works like Twitter, and that somehow all the results that are hashtagged uh, on Pinterest show up. It, it's not the case. It's still the same thing. It's it's based on is the hashtag relevant to a keyword? Um, are there a lot of repins for that specific hashtag? But you'll see a mix. But the one thing I do suggest is to create a unique hashtag for yourself. Um, for your pins only so that when people do click it, they all of a sudden they see like 20 of your manly Pinterest tips um, pins. Gotcha. Now is there a, uh, a what you re recommend for the length of a description? Because some of it, and I've noticed, and it's really frustrating on mobile, they'll have a super long description and it's almost, you know, it's almost like I'm not even going to repin that because you made me mad because I can't see <laughs> anything else, you know. So what's, what's the best length that you would recommend somebody for a description? Yeah, uh, I, so I don't know this for a fact because I'm, I'm not a data scientist, so I'm not able to collect the data. But uh, Dan Zarella from HubSpot, who is a data scientist, uh, recommends that your optimal uh, length is actually 100 to 200 characters for the most consistent amount of, of repins. Um, there is a funny, there's a funny anomaly because if you go between 300 and 325, um, it's actually you get thousands of more repins. But if you go over those characters or under it, for some reason you get like dramatically close to zero. So, so it's a very, it's a very odd phenomenon. But don't wow. ask me why. 
Yeah, it's a little short little sweet spot in there. You got to hit right on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but definitely, you know, 100 characters, kind of like a tweet, and you're in the sweet spot in terms of consistently getting repins. Gotcha. Okay, here's another question for you. Pretend, again, I'm a total new person to Pinterest. Um, so we've optimized for our individual pins that we're going to upload, that we, we're using ourselves, that are our pins. Um, and, they're, and pins are organized onto certain boards that we've created. What are some tips to help optimizing boards? Is there, a, is there any tips that you can give us just to optimize our kind of our board strategy? Yeah, in terms of your board strategy, the one thing you want to do, uh, and this is something that you're going to see as a consistent theme that I, I talk about, but it, it is really putting the search terms that your customers or your clients are looking for on Pinterest into the board name. Uh, and so a lot of people, I feel, are very creative about their board names, and they can be. So I think that you can be creative with your board names if you already have an established community that already knows you know, that they're looking for you on Google, they're looking for you on Pinterest. Uh, but for most people, when, when they're new on Pinterest, they, they're trying to grow their audience and, and they may not be familiar with their brand. So you wanna, for example, uh, again, uh, if you're selling tables, uh, you might wanna name one of your boards sofa tables. It's, it's really just that. Uh, and what you wanna do is, again, pin consistently. Um, you know, so the more that you pin, the generally the higher your search results would be within boards. Um, this is not, the, the truth is just, I think what happened just recently, I think about two weeks ago, they actually purged a lot of the board search results. So you used to actually rank for Pinterest tips. I remember very distinctly because it's one of the keywords I would track and you were number one. Uh, and then I, I went back two weeks ago and literally all the old um, results are now gone. So now is actually a good time if you're, you're fresh on Pinterest um, to actually do those keyword optimization, optimization for your boards because now is a good chance for you to show because uh, the guys like myself and Jeff, uh, which I'm crying now, uh, you know, our <laughs> Pinterest tips boards are no longer in the first, they were, we're literally not even anywhere close to the first page of results anymore. Um, so unfortunately the veterans and, and the people that have been there for a while, seems like they've kind of kicked us off a little bit. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, well, we'll take care of that later after <laughs> Um the, now, is there there's is there a place just you know because there's some confusion I think between the pen descriptions and also you know if there's board descriptions is there what do you need to do fill out when you create a new board what is the best practice you know you make a cool board name then what else do you do is there a way to you want to rearrange your boards every so often what's what, how do you do that yeah and uh, and I think Jeff uh, thanks for leading into this question because. Um, I mean, I know you already know the answer, but you're, you're, you're making me look good by asking it, so that's just the truth. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in terms of number one is you always want to fill in your board descriptions. Um, what's really interesting about board descriptions is that they, they don't necessarily, they, they, they will help a little bit in Pinterest search, um, not too much. The board names tend to matter the most, but what's really interesting as a side effect is that they can help in Google search results. So when people are looking for things on Google, and again, it's a very niche search term, um, if you leave your board description out, you know, Google can still read the descriptions on pins, but if you have the descript board description, um, they know what the board is about and it helps in Google search results. In terms of rearranging your boards and, and making them look good, uh, I always tell people, you know, especially if you're in a business uh, and you're trying to attract clients, um, your first two boards are, are really very important. You, you got to think about what the impression you're making when they, they see your, your boards right away. So uh, I had a client that I was, I was working with uh, and the first board they had was a sporting activity. Uh, and I asked him, do you do any sports marketing? He's like, no. I was like, then why is this here? And I'm like, well, it was my personal, per, it was my personal hobby. I'm like, oh, and I said, that's great. That's great if it's your personal hobby, but this is a company account. Your company name is on there. So they don't see the relationship of what's going on. Um, so you want to make sure that the first two boards are clear that they understand, hey, there's there's no sense of, like, I'm so disjointed about what this is all about. Um, and again, same thing with seasonal boards. Make sure that, hey, things are seasonal. Uh, again, back to school is really popular right now. Make sure those back to school boards are on the top. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Make sure Halloween's there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's to too many holidays that I don't even remember, but but make sure those boards are on, on the top two positions when seasonal activities are hot. 
That's a great, great tip, Vincent. Hey, we're going to take a real quick uh, break, and we're going to get to some audience questions. But like I mentioned before, if you uh, want to know more about this show, when it happens, who our guests are, how to participate, head over to manlypinteresttips.com and sign up to be a part of our email community. So let's get to the questions really quick. Well, the first one is from our friend Adam, Lev Adam Levine, and um, the question is, it went away, um, he wants us to talk about as much about rich pins as possible. So, Vincent, can you kind of give us a breakdown what what rich pins are and how a business can use them? Yeah. So, rich pins uh, rich pins are basically pins that contain extra information um, and also have a look that help it visually stand out within the Pinterest's feed. Um, and it's kind of hard to explain in the sense because we don't have a visual. But um, here's a good example uh, in terms of description. So let's say that I have rich pins for blog posts or articles. Um, the title of the blog post on the desktop will actually be nice and bolded. So it's really in your face. It, it helps it stand out versus a, a blog post that has no rich pins. Um, again, it's just a very plain description. It kind of falls back. And so that's kind of one of the features that helps us stand out. There are rich pins for um, products as well. So if you're an e-commerce site um, or if you're on Shopify, Magento, uh, OpenCart, there are rich pins for that. So again, that will have like pricing, they'll have inventory. And again, it's really great because if your product drops in price by 10%, uh, it gets an email gets sent out to the, um, the masses that has been repinned. Uh, and there's also rich pins for movies. Um, rich pins for recipes. Uh, again, if you need rich pins for recipes, ZipList is a great plugin, a WordPress plugin for that. Uh, and there's place pins, um, which is the easiest to implement because they, they, they don't need any validation. Um, but rich pins are really good and because, number one, almost all of the top search results for any search term is rich pin. So if you really want to get on top of the search results, it's almost mandatory that your, your blog or your e-commerce site has to have a rich pin. If you're an e-commerce site uh, and you want to get under the gift section of Pinterest, you have to have rich pins. That's no longer, uh, it's no longer the case where you, you can't have non-rich pins there. So, so rich pins really, at the end of the day, they, they visually stand out. Uh, they give a sense of credibility uh, and they're just, they're really helpful in terms of staying on top of search results. Gotcha. Now, are rich pins only for, um, are they only for, uh, Business accounts, or are they also available for personal? They actually are. They actually are very. They're available for personal as well, uh, depending on what it is. So, for example, if you're a blogger, um, then articles for rich pins are available to you. They just Pinterest just needs to validate it. Um, same with recipes. Uh, if you're using uh, your blog for recipes and you're not making a profit off of it. Uh, then you can actually apply for for that as well. Um, I th I believe I don't know for sure, but I believe you probably really should have a business uh, profile if you're getting rich pins for e-commerce because they're probably gonna t they're gonna take a look at it and they go, oh, this is not a, a business site, we can't authorize it, right? So um, so it, it depends on what it is, but there's small nuances to it. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, we have one more question I want to pull up real quick. It's from our friend Alyssa Meredith, and she writes, uh, that's a very interesting tip, Vincent. I like what you shared on your podcast this week, too, about pinning to multiple boards and not floating streams. I would never have noticed that. For anyone who hasn't already subscribed, you need to go to Pinterest for profits, which is great. Uh, kudos to you, Vincent. But what what a, what's she talking about? This uh, pinning to multiple boards and not floating sp streams—is that something uh, new pinners do? Uh, unfortunately, no, no. So it's so this is really fascinating. So new pinners used to do this. Um, so I'm sure Jeff, you've had that, and Alyssa, I, I, who I actually know, Alyssa. We should probably clear up the air. I know Alyssa, so Alyssa, thank you so much <laughs> for the for the, uh, the shout out. Um, but basically, it's like this. Before, it used to be that if you had a pin and you pinned on multiple boards um, and people followed all your boards, you would see all their pins flood your feed. So you could see five of their pins. Um, and so nowadays, uh, what a Pinterest did was that they realized how annoying that was. So what they did was they changed the algorithm so that when you pin to multiple boards, literally one after the other, you will, you will notice that at most, only two pins will show up on a Pinterest feed. So this is what I did for you, Jeff. Like I'm sure you noticed that you probably saw me pin to multiple boards um, yeah. all at one time because I, then I realized like I'm not annoying anybody um, 
with too many of your same pins. It really only reaches the people that have not seen that pin. So that's a strategy that you can use, which is, hey, you know what? You got a group board, so you got single boards. Repin to all 20 of them at one time to get the most reach as possible. And guess what? Nobody's going to get annoyed anymore. And, and that is such a beautiful feature that I love about Pinterest that they changed. Go ahead and spam in a good way, in a good way. Right, right, right. But yeah, but you know, but it, it's, a, it's a fantastic feature I love. That's awesome. Has that been around for a while, or is that something new that's just uh, recent, recently coming up? Uh, I think it's been around for the last month. Um, you know, I, I ended up talking to a few people in, in the Pinterest community, uh, people that had bought my book, uh, and they and I asked them, did you guys notice that, you know, the, the Pinterest feed, it no longer has the same pins repeated again and again? Uh, and that's when I noticed, like, okay, I'm going to try something out, and it worked out beautifully. So, again, people that want to to flood pins, you can do that now. You're not going to annoy anybody because the most they will ever see it on the Pinterest feed if you continuously post is twice. That's awesome. Hey, um, I wanted to give a shout out to um, to my my barber is actually in the audience. She came by because we were talking about, you know, lo I was talking to her when I was last in there, how local businesses uh, can actually use Pinterest. It's not um, it's not just for big, you know, multinational markets or brands or something like that. And I said, you know, you ought to give it a try. I mean, because she's got a lot of local people. She sells local stuff in her in her in her barber shop. And I was like, you just need to come see it. So hi, Laura. Thanks for stopping by. Um, but anyway, is, isn't that true that it's 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 not just a local market now? I mean, it really can be used successfully for small local business. It is, yeah. I think that, I mean, there's a lot of different features that Pinterest offers, but I think one of the things that you can do with Pinterest is, is create place pins. Uh, so Adam was talking about rich pins, and place pins is a type of rich pin that does not need validation. Uh, you can create an interactive map. So, for example, uh, like you're saying, your, your barber, uh, he can actually pinpoint where he, you know, what the sources of his products are. So, hey, I, I shop locally. These are the guys that, are dis, you know, are the distributor. I want to show that to you. Um, he can also, uh, again, if there is um, somebody that's following him on Pinterest and he says, hey, you know, um, hey, Jeff, I've got a pin that I want to share with you. He can do that now because we have Pinterest messaging. It's a new yeah. feature. I know we're kind of going a little bit off topic. It's not really... Um, that's right. Yeah, but but you he can he like again you you follow your barber Jeff he says hey Jeff I just found this really awesome hairstyle or beard style or whatever you want to call it nice. um, and I want to share it with you what what do you think about these five pins which one do you like best for your next haircut uh, and I think that that kind of collaboration like you talked about in your video it's about collaboration uh, is now taking new heights and that Pinterest messaging is is just amazing for local marketing I can now message my local followers and make recommendations for products for hairstyles. Um, for for reading materials, oh my God, it's like sky's the limit. Yeah, it's awesome. It's 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 an incredible feature. I'm 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 really excited to dive in deeper and kind of think strategically on how to use that. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right back into um, we were talking about Pinterest search, and um, you know we talked about inside of Pinterest, Pinterest search in there, and you kind of mentioned this before, but. How does Google, you know, the big boy on the block, use Pinterest? I mean, you know, I, you, I know you have seen it too. It's like, hey, my boards are ranking in Google search. So are, are these tips that you have just given us uh, before, do those also apply to Google search? Are there some stuff that you need to do separately to get ranked on Google? What's the best practices there? Yeah, I, I, and I want to make it clear. I'm, I'm not a, a Google SEO um, specialist. That's That's not what... That's not my specialty, uh, but in terms of like what you're saying, the basics do apply. So making sure that you're putting the, the search terms and keywords in the pin descriptions, the board descriptions, um, and even your account profile, so that it helps within Google because they are they are what they call crawling it. So they're actually scanning the words. Now, what's really fascinating I find is that because Pinterest loves new content, they love it when you regenerate new content. So when you have a board that you're pinning to consistently. Um, Google reads that, hey, this person's updated content. Let, that's that's great. Let's let's kind of move up on the ranks. Uh, and another thing that Pinterest, sorry, that Google loves is how fresh the content is. And what I've started to notice is that for very small niche keywords, uh, pins that you've only pinned maybe eight hours ago or 24 hours ago or whatever it is, will rise up very quickly on pa result page number one, almost like kind of like similar to Google Plus um, status updates. So they, they kind of rise very quickly, and sometimes they fall very quickly. Uh, so with Pinterest uh, pins, optimize it because you never know who's searching, and they might click on the individual pin 
uh, and who knows where that leads to. But the same principles apply. Um, but again, by doing it, you're you're hitting a home run with Pinterest and you're hitting a home run with Google, which is powerful stuff. That's right. Yeah, yeah I mean, I noticed my one of my pins of the day board was getting ranked on Google, which is huge. I mean, that's just that's a big big deal. That's just kind of a benefit I wasn't even thinking about. So yeah. Uh, Follow these tips that Vincent has given you uh, to help kind of boost everything kind of all at once. So it's great stuff, Pinterest, uh, uh, Vincent. Um, so I want to ask you, because um, you've been doing this for a while. I mean, I've been following you on Pinterest for a long time and love all your stuff and your and, and your articles that you've written have been very helpful. But what are what are some of the mistakes that you made when you first started on Pinterest? Something that you share that maybe you say, hey, I don't want uh, other people to do this. This is what I learned from. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I think that, um, you know, when I, I first started off on Pinterest, um, you know, I think, and, and this is still kind of a, something that I'm working on because I'm a solopreneur, right? I, you know, I've been flip-flopping about whether I should be more personal uh, with my Pinterest account. And I think the reality is if I had to start all over again, I think I wish I had been a little bit more personal. I, I I wish I had shown a little bit of my comic side. So you you know this, Jeff, because we've, we've known each other for a while, but I have a personal and a professional account. Uh, and I was always so deathly afraid. Uh, the truth is that I, I didn't want people to find out I was a comic geek. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and it wasn't because I was afraid of being a comic geek. It's just that I would be so afraid that people would never take me seriously um, as a Pinterest marketer if I... I pin stuff from Batman, um, but I realized that it's it's okay. Like people like yourself, um, Catherine Coda, um, they've really kind of guided me through the process, saying it's okay, you know. Um, so I'm kind of slowly working on that of, of showing a little bit more about my personality. I'm not saying it should be everything about myself, um, but I think that's that's a mistake I, I made. I, I realize that there are so many people that do connect beyond Pinterest. They love comics. They love those personal hobbies, uh, and the truth is, it makes such a rich relationship and, and that was a mistake that I, I, I did make uh, and I'm still making so I'm hoping you know with by the end of the summer I'm gonna start changing that around and, and add more of my personality into my my boards and, and, and my pins. Well that was something when I first started I was lucky enough that Peg Fitzpatrick told me to do she said you know don't just be one dimensional and you're not I mean I, I follow your boards Vincent and, I, and I've seen that you're doing more of that kind of stuff which I enjoy but yeah I started doing a geek board and I do you know manly food and and people really like that, and I think that helps people connect with you, like you mentioned, and find out who you are and, and want to be a part of interacting with you. So, Okay, we're coming up towards the end of our show, and I wanted, since this, this is the Manly Pinterest Tip Show, I want you, if, if you've thought about this, to what's a good manly tip you give to guys who are starting out on Pinterest? What would you tell them to do? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've always, um, I think the term manly has always been very debatable. Um, <laughs> it, it is. It's funny because I was a sociology major at uh, my university, and gender politics is always uh, an interesting topic. Um, but you know, in terms of manly things to do, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but really uh, keep true to to who you are. I mean, we talk about it as manly, but the reality is, if you love, if you're a designer, create a board that about designing. If you love barbecue meats from Texas. And start a board about barbecue meats in Texas. There is no, there is nothing wrong with who or what you are. Pin proudly, and and that's what I have to offer. That if that's going to be a man, that's my manly tip. Be proud of who you are. Pin what you're about, and and show the world that this is this is who you are. Awesome stuff. Yeah, exactly. And so, because uh, it is, it's a great place to do your thoughts, things you want to do, places you want to travel. Um, and people, thanks so much for being here, Vincent. People have really, I think, connected. They're loving your tips. Mike Halton says he's off to spam Pinterest right now. Uh, <laughs> but no, that was a great tip that, that that Pinterest doesn't see that anymore. And so I think that helped out a lot of people. And so, um, Vincent, where can we find out some more? Where can we find you online? I know we, we'll put your, your boards in the comments, and we'll make sure to put links to your website. But um, what's the best way to connect with you online? Yeah, the best way to connect with me online is definitely to find my website. Uh, it's at www.mcngmarketing.com. Um, so again, you can kind of look for me there. That you, You'll find me everywhere. Or if you want to email me personally, it's uh, vince at mcngmarketing.com. I'm always available for quick questions. Uh, you can find me there as well. And I also want to have a chance to your new product that's coming up that I was really excited about. I kind of headed to the front of the show. Tell us a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you really quickly. So uh, I'm launching the Pentalysis Academy, which is a Pinterest 
online and on-demand course. Uh, and right now it's going on for, um, it's $49 um, right now, but I'm going to offer a special right after this. Uh, so basically what it is, it's, it's basically an on-demand course where you're going to get Pinterest tips about local marketing. Uh, you're going to learn all the SEO uh, tips and secrets that I know I'm going to give everything that I've got right there uh, for the audience. Uh, and again, it's, it's really about updating it all the time because Pinterest changes so often. So when you buy a course, a lot of times you feel like, wow, this information unfortunately is outdated. It's from last year. Um, but this one is being updated on a regular basis all the time. So, so when the chance does appear, for example, like the messaging app, uh, or the messaging system, people want to know how to use it for marketing. You know, I'll be there. Uh, you know, two, two to three weeks later with a video saying this is how you're going to use it to, for your marketing. Um, so again, you can check that out because again, it's on special right now. So usually it's forty nine dollars. Uh, but if you go to academy dot mcngmarketing dot com, academy dot mcngmarketing dot com, no www. Uh, type in the coupon code manly. <laughs> yeah, manly, uh, and you'll get a $10 discount. So instead of $49, um, it'll be $39, and the course officially launches on August 31st, where you get all the goodies. But uh, again, special pricing uh, that's only good for 48 hours. That's awesome, and I and I and Vincent was kind enough to let me in and see that, and it's it's it, the production value is top notch, um, and it's great great information, and I highly recommend it. So everyone. Go over and check that out, and thanks again, Vincent, for being here. You know, thanks so much for being with us today. You know, we appreciate it. We'd love it if you go check out all of Vincent's boards and his links that we'll put in the show notes, and we'd love it if you'd head over to manlypinteresttips.com and sign up for our email community, and we so appreciate you guys being here today uh, and being part of manlypinteresttips.com where we're adding testosterone one pin at a time. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>